Fowler's definition of faith is based on the psychological and is more robust. It can be applied to religious faith not only of the Christian persuasion, but all faith systems, and as I have argued, all ethical, moral, and value systems that may resonate with the secular thinker. Fowler sees faith as, and I quote, a human phenomenon, an apparently generic consequence of the universal human burden of finding or making meaning. Fowler describes faith as an operation of the human ability to imagine. He says that humans have the tendency to imagine an ultimate environment that shapes our worldview, value systems, thinking, and initiative. He puts it this way, Faith forms a way of seeing our everyday life in relation to holistic images of what we may call the ultimate environment. Human action always involves responses and initiatives. We shape our action, responses and initiatives, in accordance with what we see to be patterns of action and meaning." End quote. In essence, we imagine an ultimate environment and then form our actions based on this ideal. Fowler breaks down how this relates to individual cognitive systems and also social connection in the following quote. Faith, in its binding us to centers of value and power, and in its triadic joining of us into communities of shared trusts and loyalties, gives form and content to our imagining of an ultimate environment." End quote. In short, we use our capacity for imagination to create an image of an ultimate environment and then draw value systems and community connectivity from these images. Fowler clarifies that this is not just fantastic thinking. He says, and I quote, "...imagination is not to be equated with fantasy or make-believe." Rather, imagination is a powerful force underlying all knowing. In faith, imagination composes comprehensive images of ultimate conditions of existence." End quote. Fowler admits that some would protest that they don't hold such an imagined ultimate environment. But he replies by saying this, and I quote, "...you may add that far from being ultimately concerned about such matters, you don't really have much concern about them at all." In response to this commonly stated position, I have to reply that the fact that an image of an ultimate environment is largely unconscious, or tacitly held, makes it no less influential or operative in a person's initiatives and responses in life. Similarly, the fact that one imagines the ultimate conditions of existence as impersonal, indifferent, hostile, or randomly chaotic, rather than as coherent and structured, does not disqualify his or her image as an operative image of faith." End quote. This made me think of the often repeated comment of the psychedelic advocate Terence McKenna, who famously stated, My technique is don't believe anything. If you believe in something, you are automatically precluded from believing its opposite. But even this perpetual suspension of belief is an imagined universal ideal, from which a set of values, or in McKenna's case, negative values, could be drawn and thus still constitutes a faith system. Fowler's not letting any of us off the hook. We can imagine a scientific or political ultimate environment and organize our responses and actions accordingly. Or we could believe that God is in control of everything and that everything on the earth happens for a reason. Or that the universe is an expanding mass of atomic energy that we happen to have evolved onto. Wherever we happen to fall, these are all ultimate environments that shape the way we develop our value systems and form communities. Faith can, by this definition, be framed as an individual or community experience. From the perspective of the individual, Fowler says this, again, broadening faith to the human rather than just the spiritual or religious, and I quote, We value that which seems of transcendent worth, and in relation to which our lives have worth. Further, in a world of powerful forces that have an impact on us, enlarging and diminishing us, forming and sometimes destroying us, we invest loyalty in and seek to align ourselves with powers that promise to sustain our lives and to undergird more being. The centers of value and power that have God value for us, therefore, are those that confirm meaning and worth on us and promise to sustain us in a dangerous world of power." End quote. In this sense, then, faith is a reaction to the power structures in the world around us. Perhaps it is that in moments when our brute force or powers of intellect fail us in social gameplay, or when we are threatened with elimination from natural powers beyond our control, we draw strength from centers of value and power that are based on our epitomized ultimate environment. From this we gain a sort of conciliatory power that sustains us, revitalizes us, or consoles us. According to Fowler, faith becomes a communal matter when the images of ultimate environment are similar among people, 
That is, they are shared. He puts it this way, and I quote, In each of the roles we play, in each significant relationship we have with others, in each institution of which we are a part, we are linked to others in shared trusts and loyalties, to centers of value and power. In each of these contexts, we serve common goals, we hold shared meanings, we remember shared stories, we celebrate and renew common hopes. Our identity and our faith must somehow bring these diverse roles, contexts, and meanings into an integrated, workable unity." End quote.